All right, so, so we are continuing with the, with the proof of the um, arzilla Kolo theorem, all right. So what we have done is we have, we have a set uh, E uh, which is a compact set uh, in the plane, all right and we have this family script F uh, given to us, it is a family of continuous complex valued functions. Uh, we have assumed that uh, 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 this family is uniformly bounded, all right. And we have further assumed that uh, this family is equicontinuous at every point and we are trying to show that uh, uh, given any sequence in this family there is a uniformly convergent subsequence okay. So we took the points the rational points of E okay the points of E with rational coordinates okay namely points of E which are complex numbers whose both real and imaginary parts are rational numbers that is the countable dense subset of E uh, and we have been able to extract using the diagonalization trick we are able to extract a sequence uh, capital F sub L uh, a, a subsequence of the given sequence Fn okay uh, with the property that this uh, sequence the subsequence converges point wise on every at every rational point of E okay that is what we have proceeded up to so far alright. Now what I am going to do now, now is the time I will have to use see so far what I have used is only the uh, I have just used the uh, the fact that the family is uniformly bounded I have just used the fact that the family is uniformly bounded and I have not used anything else. Whereas uh, I still have to use the equicontinuity of the family and I will have to use the fact that uh, everything is happening on the set E which is compact I have never used the compactness of E right we are going to use that. So, uh, so how do we proceed so we do the following thing uh, so note that uh, if so uh, we have equicontinuity of the family script f and therefore this holds for any uh, collection of functions in the family so it also holds for this f else okay so uh, so let me write that down since uh, f is equicontinuous on e so is uh, uh, f sub L okay after all this is just a uh, this is also a sequence in script F in fact this is a subsequence of the given sequence Fn that we started with right. So, so given uh, uh, Z not in E okay so you have this definition of equicontinuity what it tells you is that suppose I fix an epsilon you start with the uh, 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 start with an epsilon given to me okay uh, so given is it not in E uh, and an epsilon greater than 0 okay there exists a, a delta greater than 0 with the delta depending only on is it not an epsilon. such that uh, well uh, the distance between uh, uh, you know so I should I can so let me write it very generally uh, distance between f uh, of z and f of z naught is less than epsilon whenever the distance between z and z0 is less than delta okay and 
here I can put for small f any member here in fact I can put it for any any member in script f ok for all small f in script f in particular I can take for small f any of the capital F else also ok. This is just the equicontinuity of uh, uh, the family script f that I have assumed. So, I am I am I am using that now. Now, now what you do is uh, so you know for every for if I fix this epsilon if I fix this epsilon then you know for every uh, point z0 uh, so I am varying z0 then I get this disc uh, I get this disc centered at uh, uh, z0 radius delta. So, there are two aspects to it first thing is as you vary the the z naughts ok. Then of course, uh, the the epsilon is fixed alright, but you vary the z naughts then you get these discs the deltas will also vary because the deltas depend on z naught also, but then you will get one disc surrounding each z naught in E ok and that will give you an open cover of E ok and now use the fact that E is compact to uh, extract a finite sub cover ok. So, that is one part of the argument. So, let me write that down uh, the collection uh, mod z minus z naught lesser than delta delta of z naught comma epsilon as z naught varies over E is an open cover of E of E which is compact. So, here I am using the compactness of E and I am also using the equi uh, I am also using the equicontinuity of the family ok. So, admits a yeah, finite sub cover. So, you know you will you will get uh, uh, so the sub cover will be given by mod z minus z 1 less than uh, delta of z 1 comma epsilon mod z minus z 2 is less than delta of z 2 comma epsilon and so on mod z minus z k less than delta of z k comma epsilon. So, I, I get this sub cover all right and of course, you know uh, I do not know uh, all I know about the set E is that it is compact. I do not know uh, about anything about its interior uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Therefore, the each of these sets I mean each of these discs they need not uh, I mean this this the union of all this contains E ok, but it could be well bigger than E alright. So, so here also whenever I say mod z minus z naught is less than delta I am only looking at those z for which uh, which lie in E ok. I am not looking at z uh, in this disc which does not which do not lie in E because then if z does not lie in E f of z does not make sense ok because all the functions in my family are defined only on E ok. So, whenever I uh, write things like this I am assuming that the variable is uh, also in E right. So, you have this finite sub cover and let me call them zeta 1 zeta 2 because otherwise I, I could get into trouble. Uh, so, zeta k so here it is also zeta. So, you know I have so I, I use zeta I use different symbols so that I do not confuse them with the z i's which are supposed to be uh, all the points of E sub q ok. So, you have you have this cover alright and then you see in each of uh, uh, in each of these things uh, in each of these discs alright. Of course, uh, I will be able to find uh, a point of E q ok. I can find one point of E q in each of these discs ok. So, choose choose uh, uh, z i 1 
in uh, this disc mod z minus zeta 1 is less than delta zeta 1 comma epsilon uh, similarly z i 2 in mod z minus zeta 2 less than delta of zeta 2 of epsilon and so on you choose z i uh, there are k of them. So choose one point in each of these discs uh, so this is zeta k okay where where of course you know the zeta i j are in eq which has been enumerated as z i z n n greater than equal to 1 okay. So you choose one one rational point from each of these discs okay. I have finitely many discs which cover E okay and in each of these discs you choose a rational point alright choose a rational point. Now what you do is that uh, uh, see what you should now notice is that if you give me any point of E you give me any point of E that point has to lie in one of this okay and corresponding to that you have a certain zij okay. So you know so that is how I actually extend uh, uh, all my results to uh, for example convergence to any point of uh, E okay. So you know your if you want if you think of uh, uh, so, so uh, if Z belongs to E, then Z is uh, 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 then Z minus zeta uh, zeta. I let me use some notation. Then mod Z minus zeta L is less than uh, delta zeta sub L comma epsilon uh, for some L with 1 less than or equal to L less than or equal to K this will happen okay and uh, uh, ZIL ZIL is also uh, is also uh, in mod Z minus Z zeta L less than delta zeta I L commands. So I have this right now you know basically what I am trying to show I am trying to show that uh, uh, I am I'm, my aim is uh, you know starting with uh, a, subs, uh, a sequence uh, Fn which I have picked in this family F for which I have extracted the subsequence which converges on uh, the rational points. I am I am trying to actually show that this subsequence converges uniformly not just converges but converges uniformly and that too not only at the rational points but on all of E. I am trying to achieve both in one stroke. So here what I have is that this subsequence converges only on the rational points okay and converges on the rational points means point wise convergence it does not mean uniform convergence alright. But what I am trying to show is that not only does it converge at the rational points I am trying to say it converges everywhere and not only I am trying to say it converges everywhere I am trying to say it converges everywhere uniformly okay that is what I am trying to do. So how do I check that uh, uh, it converges uniformly so you know I will have to just check that uh, you know I just have to check that at any if I substitute any z here in this sequence of functions I get this sequence of complex numbers complex values I have to show that that sequence is uh, uniformly Cauchy okay I have to show that that is uniformly Cauchy right if I show that then I will get uniform convergence of that sequence. So what I will have to do is that I will have to compare f m of z minus f n of z 
uh, for m and n sufficiently large this is what I will have to come back right. Now what you use is you use the fact that you see this z is in this which contains the point zeta l alright and which also contains the z i l. So, what I do is I add and subtract the function uh, values at these two points. So, what I do is I write it as f m z minus f m of uh, you know if you want zeta uh, l and then plus f m of zeta l to undo the effect of adding it then I put minus f n of uh, 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 zeta uh, minus f n of now I introduce the point z i l then I undo by adding f n of z i l and then I write the final f n of z then I use the triangle inequality to and group these use the triangle inequality to get mod f m of z minus f m of zeta l plus uh, this is less than or equal to this plus modulus of f m of zeta l minus f n of z i l plus modulus of uh, f n of z i l minus f n of z okay I use this all right so you know i'm so so basically the so basically you know the diagram is like this so here is uh, if you want this is e okay and there is this point uh, zeta l uh, 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 so there is this point zeta l which is uh, uh, a point of e okay and uh, uh, there is this disc centered at zeta l radius delta okay and this intersects e uh, where this intersects e there is that is where I have chosen my point z okay my chosen point z is there plus this also contains one point of the uh, set of rational coordinates which I have taken as z i l z i sub l so that is also here so this is z i l okay so this is my situation right so uh, maybe i'll so this is e and this is uh, i think zeta l okay so this is my situation right now uh, I mean basically uh, if I show that uh, for m and n sufficiently large if I can make this less than epsilon independent of z okay then that is enough to show that the sequence capital F or sequence of capital F L's they converge uniformly on E alright. So that is my aim, my aim is I want to find m uh, a bound beyond which for all for all values of m and n beyond which for all values of z okay I can make this less than uh, epsilon alright. So what do I how do I do that so you know the uh, so the first thing that you must notice is that you see the uh, this the first expression and the last expression are the difference in the function values uh, 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 the same function involving the same function so this involves f m and this involves f n all right and of course all these f's are all part of the family script f which has equicontinuity all right. So I will have to make an adjustment so that you know uh, this term works out to lesser than epsilon by 3 uh, this term works out to less than epsilon by 3 and this term also works out to less than epsilon by 3 so that when I add all the 3 it works out to less than epsilon which is what I want. So how do I make this and this less than epsilon by 3 it is it is very simple because I will use uh, uh, I will use equicontinuity uh, in the neighborhood of uh, of, of uh, uh, zeta l uh, 
this delta of zeta l comma epsilon such that f z minus f zeta l uh, in modulus can be made less than epsilon okay but I can choose that epsilon to be uh, less than uh, I can make that epsilon epsilon by 3. So what I do is that you know uh, here I do I, I make the I go back and make this change so what I do given epsilon greater than 0 alright you choose a delta alright uh, which depends only on z0 and epsilon and not on the function f in the family such that this is not less than epsilon but let me make it epsilon by 3 okay suppose I do this alright then uh, then would I be done so instead of taking the deltas you make the change of uh, taking delta by 2 okay that still continues to be an open cover alright and uh, so I will have to change to e to delta by 2 everywhere okay so I get a finite sub cover and then I choose one rational point in each of these finitely many open disks which cover E right and then uh, uh, I note that if z is a point of E then this is going to lie in one of the one of these sets because they cover E okay so it lies in one of the one of these disks I choose the I choose that one and call the center as zeta sub L alright and uh, uh, and I also have a I can also get a rational point of E in that set okay right and uh, now I write this but when I write this expression uh, what I do is I do not I, I try not to bring in this uh, center okay but I just work with this rational uh, this point with the rational coordinate that I have chosen. So uh, instead of this I put zil here and also zil here okay. So then then I am uh, then I am in good shape so you see I get zil here I get zil here and now I have the same zil in the central term. So you know if I look at the distance in z and zil that will be less than uh, that will be less than delta by the triangle inequality because you know uh, 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 mod uh, z minus zil uh, is going to be less than or equal to mod z minus zeta il plus mod of zeta il minus uh, zil and which is less than uh, delta of zeta l comma epsilon because each one is uh, less than half delta right and then I get this inequality I get this and of course uh, this is this is zil okay and then uh, if I look at the third one I am comparing zil and z uh, uh, the function values at these points of the function fn so again I do not uh, mess up with zeta uh, zeta l but I uh, compare uh, with z okay and again um, I have the same uh, I have the same inequality and that will tell me that uh, mm, that is why that will tell me that this is still less than epsilon by 3 okay so I am in good shape so I have to only worry about this uh, fellow and here is where I use the fact that the capital uh, F's the subsequence of capital F's will converge at every rational point okay. So since uh, the F L uh, converge so let me put F M converge on E Q and uh, you know this Z I L is a point of E Q. Uh, for the given epsilon there exists an n which will depend on you know uh, epsilon and uh, 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 it will depend on epsilon and it also depend on uh, zil 
such that uh, the distance between f uh, uh, m at z i l and f n at z i l can be made less than epsilon for for uh, m and n greater than or equal to this n of epsilon comma z i l ok. Uh, this is just the Cauchy nature of the sequence f m of z i l because f m of z i l converges so it is Cauchy. So, this is the Cauchy condition ok and uh, but then I get all these n's all right and uh, the you know uh, now if I start with any z ok this uh, for that z this l may change ok if I start with if I start with any z in E this this index l that comes in all this that will depend on z ok but there are only finitely many l's the l can only range from 1 to k ok and therefore there are only finitely many such numbers capital n's ok and so if I take m and n to be larger than the maximum of all these then the modulus of this is always less than epsilon independent of z and that gives me uniform convergence of the subsequence uh, cap of capital F's ok and that finishes the proof ok. So, so for uh, n comma m greater than or equal to maximum of all these uh, n epsilon comma e z i l <coughs> 1 less than or equal to l less than or equal to k we have mod f m of z minus f n of z is less than epsilon ok independent of z of z in e and this independence of z in e tells you that the uh, the sequence of capital F's converges uniformly on E. So, this implies F n converges uniformly this this is uh, yeah 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 oh, you are right yeah I want <laughs> you are right all the 3 should add up to epsilon epsilon this is already epsilon by 3 this is epsilon by 3. So, this one has to be uh, also adjusted to be epsilon by 3 so I will put epsilon by 3 here. So, you choose n so that instead of getting this less than epsilon you get epsilon by 3 yeah thank you for pointing that out only then you will get uh, this sum less than epsilon otherwise you will get something more than that ok. So, the moral of the story is so you know basically it is a game of uh, adjusting these epsilons and deltas carefully alright and uh, uh, even if you go, go wrong a little you can uh, you know how you know what to do to adjust it ok. So, it is it is some it is some thing this epsilon delta adjustment is something that you always uh, I mean do in any analysis course alright. So, the the idea is therefore, you know you use the uh, you use the uh, uh, the uniform boundedness. So, you know let me some let us summarize what the proof did you see you have this family script f from that family you have taken a subsequence and what you want to show is that this subsequence I mean from this family you have taken a sequence not subsequence you have taken a sequence and what you want to show is that it has a subsequence which converges uniformly. So, how do you get that subsequence what you do is you first get hold of a subsequence which converges on the rational points ok that uses the uniform boundedness and the diagonalization trick ok. Once you have a subsequence which converges point wise on the rational points then you use the compactness of E and the equicontinuity to show that it converges uniformly not only on rational points, but at every point ok. And what it means is therefore, the if you take the limit of the subsequence you will get a continuous function you will certainly get a continuous function. So, in particular you know this uh, uh, this applies to for example, uh, if if, you, uh, if if your functions were all analytic functions uh, in the interior of E ok. 
then you will end up with an analytic function in the interior of E. The limit function will also be analytic in the interior of E, right. So, uh, so that is the so that is one one way of of the Arzela Ascoli theorem, which is what we need. Okay, uh, there is the other statement in Arzela Ascoli theorem, which says that if uh, you have this property that given any uh, sequence uh, in the family F which is uniformly bounded you are able to extract a uniformly convergent subsequence then uh, you have to uh, the other uh, uh, state the, the, the other statement in the theorem will tell you that you will have to show that uh, this family is equicontinuous ok and that is a proof that I am not going to go into ok it is uh, it is a proof by contradiction uh, similar to the proof that you would have seen in real analysis ok. So, I am not going to go into that, but what I need to do is uh, uh, to go to Montel's theorem ok. So, let me explain Montel's theorem. So, let me state Montel's theorem at least. So this is uh, this is the theorem that we actually uh, need, all right. And what is the theorem? Uh, well, uh, so now you see, now you want a uh, you want a statement for analytic functions, okay? You want a statement for analytic functions. So you you must understand uh, how to modify the statement. You see when you are looking at analytic functions you know analytic functions are defined only on open sets they are not defined on closed sets in particular you cannot think of them as being defined on compact sets ok because analyticity at a point means it means there is a whole neighborhood of the point where the function is defined. So, it has to be an interior point unless a point is an interior point of the domain of a function you cannot talk about its analy analyticity there. So, I cannot simply talk about you know analytic functions on a compact set does not make any sense right therefore uh, but uh, therefore you know how will you adapt the arzela ascoli theorem to the complex analysis uh, setting where you have analytic functions so the idea is what you do is whatever conditions you put they should be the, the in the arzela ascoli theorem all conditions are conditions of functions on a compact set all right whatever conditions you have they are all conditions on a compact set the hypothesis are all conditions of functions on a compact set and the 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 conclusion is also about functions on a compact set ok. And how do you adapt it to the complex analysis setting where uh, you want to apply it to analytic functions what you do is you do take analytic functions on a domain, but put all the conditions on compact subsets of the domain ok. So, you are working with analytic functions, but whatever continuity I mean whatever conditions you put try to put them on compact subsets of the domain. So, this is the so called normal conditions ok. For example, if a uh, if a uh, sequence of functions converges on compact subsets it is called normal convergence ok. If a sequence of functions uh, is uh, uniformly bounded on compact subsets it is said to be normally bounded ok. Then the natural version of uh, Arzela Ascoli theorem for analytic functions that you can expect is if you have a family of analytic uh, if you have a family of analytic functions on a domain ok. Suppose they are normally bounded ok that is they are bounded on compact subsets right. Then the equicontinuity is equivalent to normal convergence namely uh, normal convergence of a subsequence of any given sequence ok. So, the statement will be that you have uh, uh, you know a family of analytic functions on a domain ok and instead of assuming them to be uniformly bounded on the domain you will assume them only to be uniformly bounded on uh, uh, compact subsets of the domain which will anyway follow uh, uh, actually because of the Cauchy estimates just because of analyticity. So, you do not have to assume that, but it is already there ok. Then the model theorem will tell you 
that if these functions are equicontinuous, if this family is equicontinuous, then given any sequence uh, in this family, you can extract a subsequence which converges normally, namely which converges on compact subsets of the domain. Okay, and this version of the theorem, uh, this version of Arzira Ascoli theorem, is called Montel's theorem. Okay, so. Uh, you must understand the philosophical shift from going from you know Arzila Ascoli theorem to the Montel theorem. In the Arzila Ascoli theorem, all conditions, all hypotheses, all conclusions are for functions defined on compact sets. Okay. But when you come to Montel's theorem, you are working with analytic functions, and analytic functions are not defined on compact sets, they are defined basically they are defined only on open sets. Therefore, whatever conditions you put, you do not put on the functions themselves on the whole domain which is open but you put it on compact subsets of the domain. So, you change everything to fit into compact subsets of the domain ok. So, instead of uniform bounded you will get normally bounded. So, instead of saying it they are uniformly bounded on the whole domain you will assume that they are uniformly bounded on compact subsets of the domain and instead of getting uniform convergence on the domain which is too strong which you usually do not get you will get uniform convergence on compact subsets of the domain which is called normal convergence and if you adapt it to this situation uh, in this way then you get Montel's theorem and the proof is uh, surprisingly Arzila Ascoli theorem plus another uh, application of diagonalization. So, already the Arz Arzila Ascoli theorem has used one level of diagonalization as we saw in the proof, but when you adapt it to complex analysis as Montel's uh, uh, theorem you have another uh, you have to do one more diagonalization where at each stage you have to apply the Arzela Ascoli theorem and then that will give you a model theorem ok. So, we will discuss that in the in the next lecture.